Basically, so anything you go on in Derbysh Fire and Rescue Service, you will see this strap line. It's basically, would you like to make a difference in your community? Because obviously we're about prevention, stopping accidents and fires, starting from the beginning. Would you like a challenge to gain new skills and meet new people? A lot of people say when they come away with us that they gain confidence, and meet a lot of different people, find out about different training opportunities. And it's also really good for networking. Derbysh Fire and Rescue Service know a lot of people. And really, so when you're starting to apply for jobs and things like that, it's getting your face known within our organisation and other organisations within the community. And then it's just talking about coming to volunteer with us. So, um, obviously we've got inequality and diversity policy, so we're looking for volunteers who come from lots of different backgrounds, with lots of different skills and experience. All our volunteers, I'd say, are really valued and we look at things kind of expenses and support and training and those sorts of things with our organisation because we need to make sure that you're properly supported so that you're offering a good service and a quality service to our community. We've got lots of volunteering opportunities, what I'll talk to you about in a little bit. But I think, and I might be a bit biased, but volunteering with us is really rewarding. Like I say, it offers that opportunity to meet new people. There's different challenges, I think, that we can offer within our organisation, what you might not get from other volunteering opportunities, so I feel it's quite exciting. And Roy will tell you, as our, one of our volunteers, that you're able to make a difference to that community, and that's quite satisfying in itself, I think. Do you say that, Roy? It's very, very satisfying <laughs> because obviously you get to know that that household, what you've been with the community safety officers, you've made a difference, you've made them safer, you've gave them an escape plan to get out of the house if the house is on fire, you've made their children safer and everybody a lot safer so you come out yeah, we've done something positive here today. All the community safety officers are so supportive, they're caring. Any problems, that they'll do everything they can. They all work as a team. There's no I in team, so... <laughs> Helen is brilliant as the coordinator. She's so caring, so helpful. She'll do anything to help me at any time. Um, I spoke to Ellen Sunday about 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> so even at weekends, she's always there for you. So she's really, really, really good and very helpful and caring. But I think just looking at Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service and that, what a lot of our staff do, you know, they are going to be caring, they are going to be well looked after. That's the nature of our work and people who want to work for us. So that's real positive, I think, if you're thinking about volunteering for us. Thank you. Right, we have lots of different volunteer roles. Have you heard the term volunteer roles before? You know what it means? So when you come to volunteer for us, basically, and you get our application packet, we'll talk to you about the different roles, what we can offer you. And within that, we look at what skills we need and what that role's about. And it might be that you start in one role, for example, and you think, actually, that's not for me. And then you'll come to talk to me and we'll look at other things, what you might be interested in. Or you might start as um, a prevention volunteer, but then we'll direct you for different roles and different experience. But if I can just talk to you about some of the different roles. So, prevention team volunteer, that's where a lot of our volunteers really start. Like I said, prevention really is about stopping things from starting before we actually get there. So looking at where our risk is, we're working a lot more with targeted groups now. Our targeted groups are probably the elderly, 
people with young children. We get multi-agents referrals, so we'll probably get referrals from people like social workers. We had a multi-agency teams within areas now. Got lots of people working in there. They'll make referrals to us about families who might be worried about who need additional help, elderly people. We'll go in there and start looking at kind of risk assessments and how we can help people. And that's what this is going to be about. So it's working across all of Dalbyshire. What we tend to do is we'll put you near your nearest station because we understand that some people you might not drive, so we need to be inclusive, so we look at that with you. You're responsible to our prevention officer, so really it's a volunteer will come to me, but the prevention officer, we'll look at all those strategies around the prevention agenda and they'll be writing those things, what we know, make a difference in terms of safety for our communities. So the prevention team supports Starbridge Fire and Rescue and it's aimed to make Derbyshire safer. And that's what I talked about before. That's our main aim, really. You can understand within our organisation, we won't be doing our job if we weren't doing that. And fire safety checks, that's where we're going in, really, working with our communities, especially those vulnerable groups. Saying, so, yeah, have you got a smoke alarm? If not, let's get some smoke alarms. Let's have a look through your advice. You'll be trained through our community safety officers who work within the community to give that advice. We want to expect you to go out there straight away because it's about quality, training you up so that you're able to give that advice within the community. So again, you're learning kind of new skills. <coughs> you're really enhancing and complement our firefighters and meeting the needs of the local community. We'll be the face of Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service and through our recruitment, we want to make sure that we get the right people. That's why I'm here today, really. And I'll talk to you later about our recruitment process. In terms of responsibilities, these are the things really that we'd be looking for. So you'd be providing that face-to-face, -face. relationships in the community are really important. It's about gaining that trust. If you get somebody's door, you're worried about that family behind that door, they need to let you in. So it's about attitude really. If you go there and the way you present yourself is really positive and you talk to people in a positive way, they're more likely to let you in, let their friends know and we, we can work, work more with those targeted groups. So you'd be doing fire safety checks, fitting smoke alarms, so those of you can use tools really well and stuff like that, that would be really good. Supporting community, oh, there you go. <laughs> Supporting community events, so I don't, if you go onto the Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service site, you'll see events what are going on all through Derbyshire. We'll get to Chatsworth, where are you going this weekend, Roy? <coughs> I'm at Alfton Fire Station this weekend and we're also at Party in the Park at Queen's Park in Chesterfield. We're taking smoke tent up there so pop in and see us and we'll take you through the smoke tent. Which is quite amazing actually. You can't see your hand in front of your face, literally. Do you know what a smoke tent is at the end of that? Yeah, it's basically like just a tent. <laughs> you have to walk through it without being like, yeah. That's so. right. But what's interesting about it, you know, in terms of your senses, you really don't know where you are. It's really quite weird. It, it is disorientating. So really, it's about raising that awareness within the community. And again, if you were there, you'd be helping to set up, give those fire safety messages out, and to lead with the community again, building that trust within the community. Promoting safety awareness within the community, and it might be sometimes I might say, Do you want to come in and help me design some leaflets? Do you want to be part of this newsletter editorial group to get our message out there, really? So it can be, you know, quite an interesting role. And I'll look at your skills and look at what you're really good at. So it might be that one of you is really good at technology, for example, and I might be saying, Do you want to come in and give me an with this? Just like, Okay. So the roles can be quite varied. So that's our prevention team. Let's put the next one. Has anybody heard of our cadet leader scheme? Anybody <coughs> done any research into it or anything? No, no. No. Okay, so it's supporting really young people who are between 13 and 16. They come into um, a fire service, into kind of groups, and it's about promoting self-discipline, working together as a team, and self-esteem. It's accredited, so they get training as well. There you go. <laughs> Seeing people who might be interested in that one. It's one night a week. What we do say, one, uh, for a lot of our young people, they do need consistency. So if you're saying that you're going to be there and you're going to do that, then really it would be good if you were there and you're going to do that, because those young people do need that consistency. Is that okay? So that's our cadets. 
and you would work with our youth leaders who would kind of mentor you through those things and offer you training. So it might be that you're looking at things like behaviour management, safeguarding, things that would complement your role so you're able to go on and do that properly. Road safety volunteer. Anybody heard of that, Ron? Is that like going to RTCs and stuff? That's right. Well, you do, yeah. And it's really talking to young people about road safety. We do know if you go out there early in your talk giving road safety, positive road safety messages there as young people, that will make more of a difference and probably me going out there because people think, well, what do you know anyway, your age and those sorts of stereotypes. So I think it's going to kind of events and things, talking about the importance of wearing your seatbelt, obviously not using your mobile phone, that speeding, and it's through engagement and education really, and RTCs and things like that. And we'll go to events such as the Chatsworth Rally Show. This is normally part of something else, because this might not be kind of, if you want to do lots of volunteering hours, this we could put probably alongside something like a prevention volunteer. But you might have ideas as well when you come to volunteer with us and that might help us develop our service so we're always listening to what people say. Do you know what I mean? So we can develop some of these things a little bit further, thank you. Yes, again you're responsible to the youth support worker. A little bit like cadets in that we're working with 13, 16. These young people have been referred from our multi-agency colleagues, so it might be youth workers, schools, social workers are working with young people and they think this yes scheme is going to make a positive difference to the young people um so loads of really good activities so it's normally over i think eight weeks is that right roy yeah kind of come in all day during school time and activities are, are things like looking at oaks cause and arson might be creative workshops such as shop based understanding the impact of asb on local community um, fitness and well-being, lifestyles, health, eating, so it's really realistic, looks at kind of loads of things, so that's quite an interesting one, and that starts in September. So if anybody's interested in that, it's now the time really to start your recruitment process, and we can start to look at people who we think would be good for those young people. Right, this is what we want really, Derbyshire Fire and Rescue. I have to let you know now, it's very competitive. We get lots and lots of people, you can imagine, who apply to us for the reasons you want to apply for. It's really good to have on your CV and tell you get back into work. It's really recognised as an organisation. So often once you put that on, people know that you've had that kind of proper support as a volunteer, that you've done some really good training, and people will know that organisation as soon as they read it, so it's a really good one to have on your CV, and for that reason it is very competitive. What we'll be looking at really, at our application um, stage, is what skills and experience you required for your role. If any of you kind of started to look at what skills and things you've got when you apply for jobs and things like that through careers advice. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 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 So normally they'll be asking certain skills when you apply for jobs. So the certain things we're looking at are things like good communication skills. You can imagine when you're working out there in the community, you're the face of our organisation, you need to be confident and talking to people. Don't worry if you're not that confident yet because we'll get you to that stage. It's about being the right sort of person, having those good in interpersonal skills. So people skills for me are key. If you come in and you're the right sort of person, with the right attitude, we can train you up in the other areas. That's key to us, I think. We want you to have good organisational skills. So if we're saying we need you at an event, or you've said that you're going to go for eight weeks on the S scheme, we need you to be there on time, come in prepared, with a uniform on, being able to talk to the rest of the team. So, you know, you've got commitment to us, but we've also got commitment to you. We'd expect you to have good timekeeping skills. If you're going to an event and somebody's took the chip pan demonstration, smoke tent, a stand and they're saying to you, you know, we'd like you to be there for nine o'clock and then people turn up at 10 o'clock, that's going to have to add to stress at rest of our team. So before you're thinking about volunteering, think about realistically what hours you can give to us. It's no good saying, you know, I want to come in 37 hours a week and then you're never where you should be. It's best to say, actually, I'm really busy doing this, this and this, and realistically, I can only give four hours, that's fine. I would rather have that than somebody saying that they can do more and they're not there, so that's really important to us. 
We would like people who have got some previous experience of working or volunteering with people in community, like I said, those people skills are really important. So if you can evidence that, it might be something you've done within college, something you've set yeah. up. Or yeah, we did a bit of the castle. Uh, you lot, you, no, you went, did you? It was me and, me and Nick. Yeah, and we also did the RTC out there as well. Okay, yeah. Write those things down. If you put like a voluntary organisation like your park cadets as one of their staff or like yeah. scouts or something like that. Is that the sort of thing you're Brilliant. Really? That's exactly the sort of stuff, really. Where you've gone out and you've made a difference in the community. Volunteering's about giving your time for free to make a difference, really, within the community. So anything you've done in college, within a team, the sorts of projects you've talked about, all scouts, what you might have done when you were younger. List me I'll those things. It. Did you do it? All right. I'll do it. Oh, you do it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. List me those things, let me know. Like voluntary coaching and stuff, does that count? Brilliant, yeah, all those things. Put all those things down, list me, because what you need to be doing is selling yourself to us, okay? So I'm here today to tell you, you know, put those things down if you've got those, put those down, because you'll be up against people, and we look at those application parts about other people have put those things down. And awareness of health and safety, obviously, you're going to need that, aren't you? Coming to work for us, but we will train you up in those things in induction anyway. We will talk about those things, but talk about kind of what you understand about those things. We say a driving license is preferred, but not essential. It's good for us if you have, I guess, because you can get around more, but it doesn't matter because we'll put you local to where you can get to anyway. We're massive, we've got stations all over the place, so we'll put you with a community safety officer who's near to you in area. So, as a volunteer, what you'll be expected to do for us is to commit your time to developing the skills and gaining knowledge required for the role. I've talked about after interview, we would expect you to come for an induction, really, and to look at kind of different training, what's available to you, so we want to build your skills up. Discuss and agree any support needed. So, if you come to me and you say, for example, I've been on an home safety check, um, I feel as though my communication skills aren't where they are. We'll look at other support for that, do you know what I mean? It's not the end of the world, and it's about growing you within that role as well. Um, observe the relevant requirements to fire rescues authority policies, and the things what you're expected really to adhere to as a volunteer is the code of conduct, are you behave when you're with us, are you present yourself, do you wear your uniform, do you come in your ID badge, are you courteous when you go out? You know, those sorts of things, like I've said you, the image of our organisation, like I've said it's a good organisation with a good reputation. If you do something fantastic, that's absolutely great for us, word of mouth, fantastic advertising, you go out there, that will get back. But also if somebody goes out there and they do something probably what's not as good, that will get out there as well. So we're keen really to look at that quality now you present yourself. Health and safety, we'll talk about our commitment to you. You know, we'll make sure that you're insured and things like that. Equality and diversity, we're all different and that's brilliant. You come to us kind of with different needs and we'll, we will support that and the same goes for our community. When you go out, we'd expect you to understand about child and adult safeguarding. If that's something what you've not done already, then we can send you on training. It's having an awareness of rather than you being able to tell us everything about it. And obviously confidentiality, if you're going out to somebody's house, they've been referred perhaps to a multi-agency colleague like social services, they might be living where you live and you go out and you talk to somebody else for example about that family, that will get back to us and that is a real breach of confidentiality and something that we take really seriously so we would expect you to adhere to confidentiality. In terms of confidentiality, you would be bound by the same requirements as any paid staff who work for us. And again, we will take that really seriously, but there will be training and support around that too, so you understand that. Thank you. Sir, what sort of routes would what sort of route would you receive from us? So you do get a full day's induction, and we'll talk about those things. What I've just talked to you about, that safeguarding your role, what does that involve? You know, the aims of our organisation, it works within our organisation. So you've got a picture. Your training don't finish there, that's just the start of it. It's really like passing your driving test, you know what I mean? You pass your test, you've got the certificate, but there's going to be ongoing training and support for you. So if ever you're feeling, actually, I don't know, I'm not sure, I, that training might be useful, come and talk to me and I'll do the best I can, so I'll feel the training what's kind of related to that role. 
you're provided with the name and contact number of member of staff, so you'd always have my details if you ever had a problem, you guys know. I just wanted somebody to talk something over with, that's fine. So you could contact me and the community safety officers who work out in the community I've talked about. I would link you to one of those people after your induction and they would guide you when you went on home visits. And they'd only give you things when you were ready for doing them. So if it was something you're thinking, I'm not ready for that yet, they'd know that. They'd be doing an assessment and they'd be giving you a little bit of stuff to do at a time until you're ready to take some of that stuff up by yourself. Like I've said, I've talked about any concerns you talk. You do get a Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service, like we're always modelling one of them uniforms, and you do get um, an ID badge. We never want our volunteers to be out of pocket, so you do get your expenses back. So if you drive, you get, I think it's 40 pence a mile now, and that's in line with volunteering in Guns policy. If you come on um, a bus, again, all you do is kind of save as your receipts, and you would get that back. If you're in an event for more than six hours, we do say that you can have some lunch on us and that's up to £3.15. Again, you bring us your receipts because, like I said, you're giving us your time as an volunteer. We need to make sure that you're well looked after. And part of that really is making sure that you're not out of pocket in terms of expenses because we need to be inclusive. We are insured through our insurance policy, providing it's something linked to what you're doing. So if you said to me, I was at that event today, and um, I had a bounce upon bounce at Castle, and I broke my leg. <laughs> you can see how that's probably it's not linked. Not Do you know what I mean? It has to be linked to volunteering, and you have to be sensible about that. Okay, thank you. So, if you're still interested then, what you need to do, if you go onto the Derbysh Fire and Rescue site, have any of you been on it? Don't matter if you haven't. If you go on there, there's a bit, and it's got volunteer volunteers on there. Have yeah. you been on there? Yeah. The things I've talked to you today about roles and responsibilities, policies, that's all on there. It's probably not all sunk in today. It's a lot of information. Have another look through it. And also our applicant, there's like um, an email on there where you can register your interest. What happens then? That comes to my email box and then I send you out an application pack and I'll show you that in a little bit. So I get your information off of that site, you say I'm interested now in being a volunteer and that comes to my mailbox, I then send you out an application letter. This application pack, what you can come and have a look at at the end if you like and I'll go through it with you. If you get through at this stage, because that's the first part of our recruitment, not everybody will get through at this stage, I will be making sure that you've got all the skills that I've talked about up there before you get through to the next stage. If you get through to that, and not everybody will, you will get through for, um, it's a very informal interview with myself and Craig Shawcraft, who's part of the prevention team. We'll interview you, and on that day we will always get back to you. If you don't get through, don't worry, like I've said, it is a very competitive process. I will always feed back to you, I will say the thought that you're really good at these things, but actually, perhaps these are the things what you need to be thinking about. And what our partners are community voluntary services offer loads of other volunteering opportunities. So I'd be happy saying, do you want me to signpost you to them? And then you come back to us later when you've got a little bit more experience. Okay. Um, after the interview, to work with us. So we'll be doing our safeguarding checks. We'll be asking for two references. And we will be doing other checks to make sure that you're safe to come and work within our organisation. When I get that back, I'll invite you for the full day's induction and then I'll invite you back for a one-to-one -one where I'll be looking at your personal development, where you are, where you want to be, how things are going, and we'll be looking at things from there on. Like I said, if you're not successful at any stage, don't worry. I'll always come back and I'll debrief you. I'll let you know why. You know, you've gone to this trouble of filling this in, at least we can do it at Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service is to come back to you and let you know really where you might need some further support. And like I say, um, please know it is a very competitive process, but we do wish you luck in it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. So, just come and have a look at this, and I'll just... Do you want to come and have a look at some of the paperwork? And I'll just have a look at this in <laughs> So this is when you, um, if you are still, are you still interested?